This used to be a really nice looking aquarium. Somewhere along the line, I took delivery of plants and didn't have any space available, so I put all the plants in here and made a little mini greenhouse. It served its job really well, but it's time to put it back to its former glory. I've currently got another spare tank available, which is at a lower level and will suit the job a lot better. I often find that unless you've got a tank at eye level, it will get ignored quite a bit. So this one lower down will be perfect for a plant storage tank. I'm putting about an inch of water in the bottom of the aquarium. This means the plant pots can sit in the water and draw it in like a wick. This way the top part of the plant stays just moist and the roots stay wet. This is a lot more simple than just putting them into a tank full of water. A tank of water has to be maintained, this doesn't and it also allows it to continue growing. So I've currently got a collection of Anubius, Java Ferns and Bulbitus. That's not what's going in this build though. I've also got Monte Carlo and HC Cuba. We can continue to store them in this tank for the time being as they will be used in the build later on. These two plants are awesome for carpeting. The HC Cuba has teeny tiny leaves, but they look so good when grown in. It's now time for a quick tank wash down. Even though there's only a small amount of water in this tank, it still got pretty dirty. A quick wipe down of the sides, pump out the rest of the water, and then I'm gonna use my shop vac to clean the rest of it up. So this is just a water pump set up to a smart plug. I use it for removing large volumes of water. Then I use the wet dry shop vac for sucking up the last little bit. And finally, a quick wipe down of the paper towel to remove any watermarks. So that's the setup, our tank's ready to go. You might notice there's some not perfectly clean bits, but yeah, that's as clean as I'm willing to get it. We don't wanna spend all our time on the cleaning of the tank. I mean, it's about to get dirty anyway. So a few weeks ago, I set up an aquarium using pond compost, and it's been one of the best starts I've ever had. We're in week two now, and we're starting to get our diatom phase and initial sort of signs of algae. I mean, that's to be expected in a new setup, so I'm, I'm okay with that. But I was really impressed with the start. I'm really impressed with the plant growth straight away, so I wanna try this strategy again, but in an Uragumi style, which is something that I struggle with before because I normally heavily rely on stem plants using low tech setups, fast growing plants, medium level lighting and no CO2. So it's now time to set up this substrate system. First of all, I'm gonna be using some recycled sand and gravel from some previous setups. I try and save as much as I can because I know I'm gonna be using it at a later date. First of all, I'm placing in some coarse gravel that's in some tights or patios. <laughs> Anyway, these allow us to build height at the back and will also provide a great area for beneficial bacteria to colonize. We then need to place in some of the finer material amongst all the gaps and also in the foreground to create a gentle slope. You can apply a little bit of force with your hand just to ensure we're getting the right shape of the skate. Manipulate the coarser gravel to give you what you need. It's then time to select our hardscape. I recently acquired some mountain stone. There's quite a bit here, but I don't need all of it. We're going for a rock only Iwagumi scape. Now usually these only have odd numbers of stones. I'm gonna use one big piece and then a couple of small pieces either side. Now there are a bunch of rules that you're supposed to follow with this kind of setup, but I don't follow rules. I'm just gonna put them in and see what I think looks good to my eye. I think you should do the same in your tanks if I'm honest. At the end of the day, you're the one looking at it every day, so it needs to look how you want it. So I found that first rock to be sitting quite flat and I used another one to prop it up. Then found it was a little bit wobbly, so I uh, sort of got some more stones and lodged it so it stayed flat. Then I gave it the tap test because it's internationally known. If you can firmly smash your rock and it doesn't fall over and smash the tank, you're good to go. If it does, well, but yeah. <laughs> I then went for a smaller piece on the left hand side and a lower smaller piece on the right hand side. It does sort of follow some kind of line, but I'm not sticking to any strict rules. 
At this stage, I didn't think it looked that great to be honest, but I knew it would do with all the plants around it. What I like about this mountain stone is the strata lines can add some dramatic effects to the scape. So I've got the main stone going at 45 degrees and then I've got the one in the foreground going the opposite way to add some stress to the look of the layout. The one on the far left is kind of doing its own thing. <laughs> but that's okay, not everything has to be perfect. Make it as good as you can and don't be crippled by perfection. Now we've got the basic structural shape sorted for the scape, it's time to add our nutrient layer. And as said at the beginning, we're gonna be using pond compost. Now this is nutrient rich, but it's had some of the nitrates and that kind of thing removed, which means it should be pretty safe straight away. It definitely was in the previous scape anyway. Obviously water testing is required before you put in any fish into a scape. I'm gonna be putting about an inch thick layer across the whole of the tank. There's gonna be plants everywhere, so this is necessary. You can see here I'm making sure to pull the pond compost away from the front of the glass otherwise this is going to look really bad when we put the sand on top and we should get a much more aesthetic look. Certain scapes I like to show it but for this one I'm going for a real neat look. And when you pour your sand in make sure you pour in that front section first and that will stop any of the soil leaching forward. We're basically using pool filter sand here which is like a silicate quartz based sand. It's ideal for aquariums and has worked really well for me in the past. Now remember the point of this sand is to cap down the compost. We need at least an inch thick. At the back areas I'm going to do a little bit extra as well just to make sure there's enough space for planting into. Whenever I do a capping layer I also like to press it down. This makes sure it's nice and even and that there aren't any soft spots where I might have laid down only a few centimetres of sand. Next up I want to add some detail stones around the main rocks. This is the Denale Rio Zingu, I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. It looks so good against these rocks doesn't it, it looks like it's just naturally fallen and you can see by the way I'm sprinkling it there, being very loose with my hands, keeping it tight into the rocks. You can make it a little bit more sparse as you get further away. I find this is the best way to give a natural look. So that's the hardscape for this tank complete. I want to do something now that's working in another tank and it's working so well, I think it will look really good in this tank as well. This is my new African River Aquarium. When I say new, I mean literally a few days old. I think it's been running for three days now at the time of filming this. But if you have a look at those really bright green bushy areas, that is Rickia or Crystal Wart as it's also known. But how great does that look? Now these were really simple to make. All you need is your rickia, obviously, a flat sort of stone, doesn't have to be perfectly flat though, and some cotton thread. Now I made these little pockets of pleasure by placing the rickia on small stones or little pieces of slate and then wrapping them up with some cotton thread. You want to keep the thread nice and tight and make sure that after you've tightened it and everything's locked down, you trim off any excess rickia. This is important because it makes sure it grows back nice and dense and bushy. For the first few days it all stays quite flat, but then now look, three days later, it's standing upright and looking amazing. I think this will look really good in our new Irigumi scape. I'm placing them in the foreground and at the base of the main rocks. It should look really good there when they grow in. Next up, it's time to get our proper plants. I mean, the other ones are proper plants as well, the Rickia, but I mean, you know what I mean, like plantable plants. The Monte Carlo and the HC Cuba. 
So they're grown in these little pots on a much larger scale than I was keeping them stored. To prepare them, you need to take them out of the pots and for the Monte Carlo, peel off the two halves of the rock wall. Be careful with this, you don't want to damage the roots. Now some of the things in the hobby are just not necessary and a bit of a sales pitch, but tweezers, they're a must. Especially for plants like this, you need to pinch it at the base of the roots and push it right into the sand. That way we'll get a good anchor on it and it won't float up. Hopefully anyway, I have done this before and came in the next day and everything was floating on the surface. Not good. Don't forget to spray down regularly as well. These plants are only small remember so they dry out very quick. Next up is the HC Cuba. Now these are tiny and their root systems are very small as well. So in the past I've just trimmed the rock wall and left the little bit on where the roots are attached to. A small amount of rock wall is not going to hurt at all. Also it makes it easy to pinch and plant into the sand and should be anchored really well. I've actually done this on another scape I've set up recently and the results are going great. It's the best reaction to HC Cuba I've seen because it's usually a plant that requires CO2. We've got half decent lighting though so we should be good. Well. I think that's turned out pretty darn amazing. Okay, it doesn't look too natural at the moment, but give it a bit of time, it'll all fill in and look awesome. Now it's at this stage that I like to fill a tank up if I'm gonna be putting stem plants in. I just find it so much easier to plant them, they stay in better, they sit how you want them to sit, and you can visualize the end result so much easier. I'm placing down some paper towel and then filling the tank up really slowly. Well, it looks really fast, obviously, because it's a time lapse, but I'm actually doing it really slowly. It took about 15 to 20 minutes to fill the whole thing up and doing it this way means we get super clear water. There's nothing worse than when you put in all that work and then you fill it up with water and it's all cloudy and horrible. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> The rocks and the sand have left some floating debris, a weird filmy sort of thing. Anyway, I'm using a surface skimmer just to quickly clear the surface. It's such a good tool to have on hand. I keep a spare one that I don't actually put in a tank so I can move it around and do this whenever's needed. Next up, we need to add our filter. So I'm stealing one from one of my other tanks. It's been set up for like six months, it's full of snails, fully cycled and will be perfect to place straight into the new aquarium. This means that we can put the fish in straight away because the filter will be full of beneficial bacteria that will consume any waste the fish produce. This was just a plant storage tank so it doesn't matter, I'm breaking it down shortly anyway because I've got some new plants arriving that need a new sort of greenhouse style tank. There's quite a few of them you see for a massive project we've got coming up. It's going to be so good, you do not want to miss it so make sure you're subscribed for that one. Now the next day the water's cleared beautifully. It's now time to add in some stem plants. Now I want to do something using some plants that I've got done in my plant storage tank that look so good. Initially I set this tank up as a structured Dutch style tank. That means you have sections of coloured plants and you trim them all back neatly and that kind of thing. Well I lost interest in that, it's just not my thing. But I love the way that the plants have all sort of merged together and created this really natural look. So what I'm doing now is plucking out the tallest stems. The reason being, if I leave the shorter ones, we can let them grow out and we can use them for a different scape. But there's quite a few long ones here that look really good peeking over the top of our rocks. So I'll just take all of those, there's plenty to choose from. To be honest, I hadn't paid that much attention to this tank, but my goodness, these plants look so, so good, don't they? The colors are super vibrant. There's high lighting on this tank, you see, and as always, there's no CO2 either. But it's been running for quite a while and it's found a really good balance. One of those tanks you can just chuck anything in and it grows well. So I'm putting the plants in just behind the main rock off center to the left and I'm not going to do it in any sort of formal fashion I just want them to look really wild like wildflowers growing in a field in that back area they're all going to be at different heights but that's the look I'm going for and as they grow I'm going to trim them all at different heights as well it should look awesome straight away but it's going to look even better in a few months time so you don't just have to plant each individual stem at a time you can do like I'm doing here and grab a clump of them as well. It can sometimes be a little trickier and you do need to make sure you've got a deep sand bed to plant into. If it's shallow, 
no chance, it would just float up straight away. I then wanted to continue the stem and colour theme into the foreground a little. My eyes were drawn to this little spot here and I think it's going to work really well. Again, it's the same stems, we've got Rotala Green, Rotala HRA, and there will be a little bit of Rotala Macandra as well. And for the piece of resistance, that's a Lego movie joke by the way, Rotala Macandra, Macanan, Macrandra, ma th that one. <laughs> I think it's really good to have that one punchy focal point right there in the middle of all those shrubs. They're not shrubs, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so all that's left to do is clean off the surface and do some nice big water changes. I say changes because I'm sucking out the water and refilling it as it happens. This way I can keep the filter running, the plants don't flop over, all that sort of thing. We keep the water level high, but we're turning over the water continuously. So here's the tank after a few days. I didn't want to put the fish in straight away because I just wanted to make sure the water parameters were staying stable. I have been ghost feeding though. Now ghost feeding means that you put food into the tank to ensure that all the beneficial bacteria that are still in the filter have a source of ammonia to survive. So now we're all ready to go and we can add the fish. So this is an old project of mine that's coming to an end. I'm going to be using this tank for some bigger fish so we need to take everything out including these fish. But the fish going in the new tank are going to be these amazing albino cherry barbs. Look at them. This is exactly how they are as well. They are literally this vibrant. I think they're going to look so good in our new tank with the contrasting background and the colourful plants as well. Right, we just need to collect some of their water so we can scoop them out. Now, I've said this before, but we've got a new number one. The best fish catching session I've ever had. They might as well have just jumped into the net for me. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. I did do a nice little trick though, I sprinkled in a little bit of food just before I started trying to catch them. They were completely preoccupied with the food to even notice my big white net scooping in at them. <laughs> at this point I actually thought I'd caught all the barbs, but it didn't look like there was enough in there so I looked back at the tank, I'd forgotten two, they must have been hiding whilst I did the first catch. Come on guys, in you get. There we go, all caught, there's seven in total. And now we can just take the pot and transfer it over into the other aquarium to temperature acclimate. Now I've actually got two fish rooms and they're both kept at the same temperature, which means the water should be the same. But just in case, I'm gonna leave them in this tank for 10 minutes or so, just to make sure there's no shock. Right, it's now time to release the fish. I'm gonna try and do this whilst holding the camera as steady as I can, but it's difficult. Right, here we go, they should be completely fine with temperature now, so there's no problems with that. In you go guys, look at that, what? look at the colours against the black, that is insane isn't it? Oh, I just completely scared the fish in there putting that pot down, sorry about these fish, a little bit of mess in the water now, but that's okay, we'll live with that. Look at the colours, absolutely spectacular aren't they? And so they go really well against the green, which remember this whole base is going to be green at some point, they seem to be enjoying it look, so the flow shoots straight down the middle and sort of goes left and right. They will interact with the flow as any fish do. See, there you go, look, he's, he's doing that on, or she is doing that on purpose. But they look so good, don't they, in this tank. Oh, look at that, that's an absolutely awesome shot. Oh, I need a thumbnail, don't I? If I just wait here for, t for like an hour, and we'll get the perfect thumbnail. <laughs> So I couldn't be more pleased with how this one's turned out, guys. This is one of those, though, that's going to grow in to look absolutely insane. It looks good at the moment, but just wait three months or so. It's going to look so good. All the plants in the back section will thicken right out and just cover that whole back corner. And as said, all this Monte Carlo and HC Cuba will completely cover all the bits of sand you can see there. And we should just have the rocks poking through. Hopefully, we'll still get a little bit of the detail stones. But if not, I can add some more on top as well. Thank you. 